depending on the time of year, bass are on specific types of forage. And when they're on the shad, I have a perfect little technique that I've been using to catch tons of fish out on my local lakes lately. And I think it's gonna translate all over the country. And we're talking about it right now. This presentation that I'm gonna be talking to you guys about today is a super simple technique. It doesn't take a lot of equipment, but you need to have the six cents juggle minnow. You need a four aught straight shank hook and you need your spinning rod and reel set up just like this. Now in today's video, we're not gonna just talk about the bait or just talk about the rod. We're gonna talk about everything from how to rig this up, what knots to use, how to get your braid to fluorocarbon leader set up, everything, the rod, the reel, line, baits, hooks, everything. We're talking about all of it in detail, how to work this bait, the retrieve, everything, and you're gonna know exactly what to do the next time you go out on the water. But guys, this video is gonna be brought to you guys by Waterland Fishing Optics. Waterland is my sunglasses sponsor. I got my Hybro frames right on right now. I really like these frames, guys. I love them on the water, love them off the water. One of my other favorite pairs to wear on the water are the Ashores, and they have those in the glass lenses. They have Hybros in the polycarbonate lenses. So head over to waterlandco.com, check out all their different products that they have over there. Use discount code LUNA15, it'll save you 15% off. And I'm also gonna put a link to their website in the description of today's video. So head down there, click on the link, and save 15% off using code LUNA15. So the first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is the bait. The baits that I've been using are the Six Sense Juggle Minnow. This is the Ghost Minnow color, and another color that's been very effective for me is the Sexified Shad color. These are both very, very natural colors. It's a four inch bait, and I'm working it very similar to a soft plastic jerk bait. Something else that's very important with this technique is the hook. This is the owner cover shot hook in the four aught size. I like using this hook in particular for this presentation because I want this to have an exposed hook point because sometimes these fish are just slapping at it they're just coming up and they think it's a real bait fish and then they get there at the last second and you need that exposed hook to really get that hook inside of that mouth of that fish and I like this larger size hook because it just adds that little tiny bit more weight to this whole entire package and you're able to cast it on that spinning rod a decent amount of distance because a lot of times when I'm fishing this I'm targeting fish that are busting the surface chasing shad a couple other important components to this technique is having braided line on your spinning reel this is cigar smackdown in 10 pound test and it goes to a fluorocarbon leader in eight pound test i use a uni to uni knot in order to get the braided line connected to the fluorocarbon line and then i use a palomar knot on to my four aught hook so the first step in the process is getting our fluorocarbon line tied to our braided main line and like i said a minute ago i'm going to use the uni to uni knot to do this and i will put a link to a video describing how to tie up this uni to uni knot. It's just kind of complicated to do in this video, so I am going to just link it for you guys. So our uni to uni knot is all ready to go, and now we just need to get enough of our leader line in order to fish this effectively. And like what I like to do is just reel up my fluorocarbon all the way until it gets past the first guide right here on your spinning reel because when I go to cast it, it's usually gonna have that knot right about where I want it, where my finger is gonna go to release the bail and cast. So that's why I like doing that and that gives me a good seven to 10 feet of line out into the water to separate that hook and the knot and the braid and everything like that. It gives you a lot of good vis invisibility with that fluorocarbon and your knot's too close with that real bright braided line. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna tie a Palomar knot to our four rot hook right here. So we're gonna feed the fluorocarbon through. We're gonna make a loop. So we're gonna feed that fluorocarbon back through while keeping a loop in this tag end side of our hook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie one small overhand knot, just like that. And then this hook is gonna go through our loop that we created with the overhand knot and you're gonna to start to slowly pull everything together. And then I like to wet the line, just like so, and then pull it tight. And then we have our Palomar knot ready to go. And now all you have to do is cut our tag end, just like that, and our hook is ready to go. So the next step in this setup is putting our juggle minnow onto our hook. And basically you just slide the hook point down into the center of this bait and you're gonna go about three quarters of the way down the bait and come out 
the top. And the main thing you want to do is make sure that this bait is on the hook very, very straight because it will impact how it functions and how it acts in the water if it's not straight. But you want to have a good amount of gap outside of this bait with that hook point out there. These fish are going to be slapping at this bait. They're going to be going after the real actual shad and then they're going to see this plastic and they're initially going to think it's a real bait fish. And as they sometimes get close to it, they realize it's not real, but it's too late. They've already committed and you want that hook point out so that way it gets more of those fish that are just slapping at it or they're getting close to that bait then realizing at the last second it's not the real thing but they're so committed that they end up getting this bait in their mouth and then you get that hook into their mouth as well and you're able to catch that fish. Now guys, this is a weightless presentation, which is why this braided line is very, very key. I like to use the braided line in that 10 pound test because it's a thinner diameter than the heavier braided line sizes, and it's gonna allow you to cast it further. That thinner diameter on the braided line is just gonna help you to cast further, and the reason you wanna be able to cast as far as possible because it gives you more access to more fish. The further you can cast, the further out you can chase those schooling fish. If you can only cast a short distance, you're minimizing the amount of fish that you can target because they're breaking the surface too far away. Way. And when I'm fishing this technique, I'm not just casting it constantly. I'm waiting for those fish to come break the surface and chase after those bait fish. When you see those fish break the surface, that's when you want to cast out and you want to cast as accurately as possible to those specific locations where those fish have just come up. You know those fish are in the area, you know the bait are in the area, and you want to cast that bait directly on top of that boil. Sometimes you want to go across it, a little bit past it, and work it back through it. Other times there's just a big giant school of fish and you just got to get in the area and they'll chase it and catch it but accuracy is going to be your friend the more accurate you can cast the more fish you're going to catch something else that's very important is how you retrieve this bait this bait is going to be worked very very similarly as you would a soft plastic jerk bait doesn't really matter the size of the soft plastic jerk bait but you're going to be moving it very very similar you're going to cast this thing out there and you're going to be jerking it just like you would with a soft plastic jerk bait now every fish is different in what presentation they specifically want each and every time you cast. Sometimes you can get on a pattern and they want it very similarly. Other times every fish is different. I've been out at times where I cast this thing out and I work it really, really fast across the top of the water and they come up and get it. Other times I got to work it very, very slow and let that thing sink very, very slow. It looks like a dying bait fish and then those fish come out of nowhere and get it. Other times they follow it and you need to give it erratic and stop and then other times you just got to play around with it and figure out what those fish want each individual time. Sometimes they just want it a little V across the top of the water. You cast this thing out and you slow reel it across the top and there's a little V that this bait makes along the top of the water and that's what those fish want. You have to imitate the different bait fish that you're trying to imitate with this juggle minnow and sometimes that's going to be imitating a dying bait fish. Sometimes those fish are going to come up, go after one of these bait fish and it's going to wound it and it's going to start sinking and this imitates that perfectly as it's falling down in the water and sinking. One thing I do want to caution you guys is when you see this in the water, it will fall over and that hook a lot of times will turn this bait upside down. Don't worry about that. It's not that important in this particular setup. You're not fishing this around cover. A lot of times it's in open water in the back of a cut in the main lake, just wherever these fish are chasing those bait fish. I've caught tons of fish with that hook upside down. Sometimes you will hook those fish a little bit awkwardly compared to how you normally hook them but my landing percentage is very, very good with this technique. So now when it comes to casting this technique, I recommend having a little bit longer amount of line coming out of your rod tip. It's gonna give you a little bit more of a whip and it's gonna help cast this bait a little bit further than you would if you have a shorter amount of line coming off the tip of your rod. And it gets the momentum of that bait at the end of that line and really helps get a little bit more distance out of your bait. Cause like I said, guys, the further you can cast this bait, the more fish you're able to catch. Sometimes these fish are also gonna feel that boat pressure if you have forward facing sonar, they're gonna be getting that sonar cone going out there and they're gonna start feeling you and knowing that you're there and sometimes that'll shut down that bite. So sometimes having the ability to cast this bait further is going to increase your chances of being able to catch more of these fish because sometimes just the pressure of your boat moving in will shut some of these fish down. So being able to make those long casts while they're active are key and it's gonna help you put more fish in the boat. Now the specific rod and reel that I'm using for this technique is the Shimano Vanford spinning reel along with the Six Sense Luck spinning rod. I feel like this combination is perfect. It gives me a good drag on this because with this eight pound test, you're gonna be using that drag with these fish. You're gonna be catching decent sized fish. You're gonna catch a lot of small ones, but you will get those good quality tournament fish 
with this technique and having a good rod like the Six Sense Lux spinning rod is also key. It's got a nice softer tip to help you cast this light bait, but it also has the backbone to really drive that hook into those fish. We don't always catch them on hard top water baits, so we have to get real finessey with our presentations with these schooling fish, just like this juggle minnow presentation is. So if you're out there, they're schooling, you're trying to catch them on some of those top water baits and it's not working, give this a shot, and I think you'll be very, very surprised at how effective this presentation is. If you wanna see me out on the water fishing this technique, catching a bunch of fish, make sure to click on the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.